Hi everyone and thanks for joining us for this brief video on ventilation. Uh, so in the video today, um, I'm going to be chatting with uh, Gavin Greenfield, Shell Odenbach and Chad Hagee just about a few things. So just to go over our objectives uh, for the talk, we're going to talk about PRVC and really uh, why this is a pressure control mode. Um, and so PRVC is also known as CMV plus on the Hamilton T1. And uh, it is a, a pressure controlled mode of ventilation. So we're going to chat about that a little bit. We're going to talk about the, um, the, the features that make this a pressure control mode. Um, and so we're going to also talk about really in situations when we arrive and even if there's a request to, to place the patient in pressure control mode, why there may be some benefit to starting off still in PRVC um, because that PRVC mode does have a lot of the, the benefits or it is a pressure control mode. Uh, then we'll chat a little bit about the circumstances where we would want to consider moving from PRVC into PCV plus and then we'll just go over how to actually do that on the Hamilton T1 ventilator. So I uh, hope you enjoy the, the little chat here. As always, please reach out if you have any questions or concerns uh, about the talk. Um, that You can email myself or um, uh, Shell or uh, Chad as well, or Dr. Greenfield, and uh, we'd be happy to hear from you and we'll get back to you. Thanks very much. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here today. I'm joined here by the ventilation education team. Uh, so Chad Hagee, Shell Odenbaugh, and Dr. Gavin Gr Greenfield. And what we're here to chat with you about today is, I, I think it's something I know I've encountered uh, more recently and, and uh, probably some of you have as well, and that's situations where we're being asked to place the transport a patient uh, in a pressure controlled ventilation mode. So certainly uh, with some of our patients with COVID, um, the, the sending facility um, will have that mode set up ahead of time uh, due to some of the benefits that are, that are the perceived benefits of pressure control ventilation. But what I'd like to talk about today is that our standard mode that we use, so PRVC, um, is a pressure control mode. And a lot of those benefits we can get with that mode. And so to help illustrate this point, um, I'd like to chat with uh, Chad and, and Shell, and, and Dr. Greenfield is going to jump in as well. And we'll show you some of the waveforms to help illustrate this point. So do you want to start us off here, Chad? Yeah, sure. Um Matt, I totally agree that um, that, and I, I'm sure uh, Gavin and Shell would also agree with that. Is that uh, when we look at the the image on the left here, that's the uh, the pure mo the pure pressure control ventilation. CMV plus or PRVC uh, is a little bit different in this fact that we set a tidal volume, but. You know, but as a result of the set tidal volume, the machine picks a specific pressure. And so the image on the right, uh, the machine required 26 centimeters of water uh, in order to achieve a tidal volume of 578. And so the image on the left, though, is the pressure control ventilation at the exact same uh, peak pressure of 26 centimeters of water. And you can see that the tidal volume and the minute ventilation are identical. Uh, the, the top image um, is the, or the top waveform is the pressure control waveform. And, uh, and, and what the machine does is it holds that 26 centimeters of water for one second. The, the bottom, bottom image, the flow waveform, uh, is the resulting flow. Uh, but you can see in both of these modes, the, the, in CMV plus and PRVC, both of these modes are, are essentially identical. Uh, Gavin or Shell, do you have anything to add uh, in that regard? Just to re-emphasize that point, when you look at the waveforms, the pressure waveform's the same. The flow is a decelerating flow waveform. You're at that 26 peak of pressure and you're achieving the same volume. So I completely agree, Chad. They are essentially the same. Yeah, and just to emphasize, on, uh, they are on an individual breath basis, they are identical, the way that breath is delivered and the waveforms show that. Um, I think a better, more descriptive term than PRVC is VTPC, so volume targeted. So if we look at that image on the right, SCMV plus, which is our PRVC, we're targeting 560. Um, so VTPC, volume targeted, pressure controlled, because each breath is a pressure controlled breath. The machine just picks that pressure um, uh, based on what's happened on the pr previous few breaths, picks that pressure to attain that volume of 560. Um, but as these waveforms show on a breath by breath basis, this is a pressure controlled mode. So back to Matt's initial point, 
absolutely we can use SCMV plus if we're asked to ventilate a patient in a pressure controlled mode. Yeah, perfect. So that that's great. Thank you very much. And I, so maybe just to clarify that and, and to tie it to a case. So if we we arrived at a patient who, uh, like I say, going back to a patient with COVID pneumonia who is being ventilated in the pressure control mode, but just given that most of us are much more comfortable with PRVC, we would be safe to at least start in PRVC, given the similarities that you, you've you all mentioned, uh, to start in that mode and see if we have some success with that, and if we do, to continue on with that mode of PRVC. Yeah. yeah, I agree, Matt. And what we would do there is in the pressure control ventilation mode, we would say, what volumes are you getting based on that pressure? So what are you targeting? And if they say, in that example, we are targeting 560 is where this patient has ended up, on that pressure, we would then go into PRVC and our target volume would be exactly the volumes they were getting on that pressure. And then just as you said, the ventilator is going to ramp up its pressure to be able to deliver that target volume. Just one point of clarity there, Shell, um, and I know we're all thinking this, uh, coming from the same playbook here, in pressure control, they they're they, just the nomenclature. They're not targeting a volume, right? They're they're putting in the pressure, and then the compliance of that patient and the resistance in that patient will will result in whatever volume they're actually getting. Um, so when they put in their pressure of thirty, and they get a volume of whatever it is, that's their volume they're getting. But then we can take that volume, and that can be our target when we move them back to PRVC or SCMB plus, we'll, we'll take that knowledge. Okay, they're getting 500 cc's at 30 centimeters of water. Okay, let's target 500 cc's. And we know that uh, the machine will then ramp up pressure to, to target that volume. Yeah, exactly, Gavin. They're still trying to aim the lowest level of pressure to deliver a tidal volume. So their aim still when they're putting somebody on pressure control, ventilation is still between four and eight mils per kilo, roughly there. And they change the operator, changes that pressure, that P control um, to be able to get that volume or decrease it to obtain around those volumes. Perfect. T totally. So I think the summary there then would be, um, Matt, I, I agree that it seems like it's a common request for the difficult to oxygenate or difficult to ventilate patient to be put onto a pure pressure mode. But but I guess I think what we're saying is, is that CMB plus or PRBC is a pressure controlled mode and it's it, it would probably suffice just to keep, leave those patients on PRBC or CMB plus. There are a couple of circumstances uh, that we talk about in previous vent courses, as well as the CCMCPs, where we say, you know, maybe a pressure control mode might be um, uh, might be uh, have certain advantages over CMV plus. And yep. uh, those those two scenarios uh, include the patient with high resistance. So and, and the reason is, um, and we could show an image of that if you like, is that it takes a while for the machine. The machine delivers starts off by delivering five pressure controlled breaths at 20 centimeters of water. And then, uh, and then if you're giving the patient 10, 10 breaths per minute because you've put them into the obstructive protocol, then uh, it's going to take, take a significant period of time before the patient, before the machine ramps up to a, a pressure that's sufficient enough in order to give, uh, you know, a reasonable tidal volume. And if the pa patient can't handle that from an oxygenation perspective, then, you know, you starting off in a pressure control mode and then quickly ramping up by five or 10 in this patient with high inspiratory resistance at a rate of 10, um, you could probably do that a lot faster. And so that's one, one example where we say maybe maybe the pressure controlled mode uh, ventilation makes a little bit more sense. Perfect. And what was the one other case, Chad? Yeah. And then the other one is 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 uh, is in cardiac arrest. The uh, the reason in, in cardiac arrest that we say switch to pressure control mode is again it's 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 similar principle. Uh, we say start off you know at a peak pressure of uh, between thirty and forty centimeters of water, and in order to achieve that you know we'd leave peep set at five probably, and then we would start somewhere between twenty five and thirty five uh, centimeters of water of pressure control, so that your total pressure would be between between 30 and 40 centimeters of water and and the reason that we say pressure control ventilation is because there's going to be variable uh compliance of the chest wall because of the chest compressor and so when you're you know, if you stopped for um for a pulse check or if you change compressors uh then then what the uh, the operator can do is is change the amount of pressure 
uh, of um, changing the amount of pressure so that you can achieve a tidal volume of sort of four to six cc's per kilo. Perfect. Okay, so just to summarize there, the two cases that we really would consider going with a pressure control mode would be that patient who were ventilating with an obstructive uh, vent strategy with high rates of resistance where we're concerned PRVC may take too long to ramp up or in patients that in cardiac arrest where we're uh, doing ongoing CPR. I think those are the main modes. Yeah, yeah. What, what else can you guys add? To? One point of clarification. When we say go to a pressure controlled mode, again, SCMV plus is a pressure controlled mode. What we're saying specifically is going to PCV plus in sure. those two scenarios. Okay. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Okay. Um, and so I guess my my final question, and maybe I'll put this to you, Shell, would be in in the circumstances where we do go into PCV plus, um, you, can you just give us a couple of things we need to keep in mind when we're setting that up to make sure we're achieving the, the, the level of, um, of pressure that we want to deliver for the patient? Yeah, for sure. So if you're setting up pressure control ventilation, so the actual PCV mode, it's the operator who directly sets the pressure. And as Gavin mentioned, whatever that pressure is, the lung will inflate. And so as the operator, you start at a pressure and you look at your tidal volumes that are being achieved at that set pressure. If you require more tidal volume, you would increase the P control. If you are receiving too much volume, then you need to go down on the P control. So one of the differences is, is in the PCV plus, it's the operator who needs to keep a close eye on the achieved tidal volumes. Where in PRVC, what I really like about that it is a pressure controlled ventilator and it is automatically doing that for us where in pcv as the operator you need to keep a close eye on the volumes that are getting achieved okay perfect and then just to clarify if i if i wanted to set let's just say as an example here if i wanted to the patient to receive a pressure of 30 centimeters of water i would set that uh, our standard peep of five and then a P in of 25 for a total, and that will give us a total of 30. Yeah, so documenting and reporting is different in the literature and the nomenclature. And even Matt, you just said the word P inspiratory. Mm -hmm. And actually the Hamilton T1 uses the word P inspiratory, P insp, P support, so pressure support, and P control almost interchangeably so you, when you're in non-invasive ST, which is something familiar to all of us, it's referred to as P insp. If you are in non-invasive, it's referred to as P support. If you are on pressure control, it's referred to as P control. So they're using those terms essentially interchangeably. And what they all mean is they are the delta pressure. So what that means is it's the pressure of over and above the peak. So it's called the delta. So in the example you just gave, where you said there is a PEEP of five, you would have said your P control would be 25. So your delta pressure is 25. Your total pressure is 30. So that would be documented and stated as 30 on five. Okay, perfect. Anything you want to add there, Gavin or Chad? No, no, that's, uh, that's, that's great. And, and, and of course, to Shell's point, where we can sometimes get into trouble if we don't know how that is calculated is when we start putting higher P control values. You know, you put a P control value of 30 because, you you know, and your peeps at 10. Well, that's actually going to give you a peak pressure of 40. It's going to be mm -hmm. 40 on 10. So, yeah, an important point to be aware of uh, when if we do go into the PCV plus mode. For sure that that's above. Uh, what we are, what our peep setting is and add. yeah whatever yes. you put in the p control we have to add to the peep and that is going to give you your peak pressure for sure um, yeah yeah and then you know we've talked about this in on the on on several event courses before not as concerned about the total peak pressure more concerned about the plateau pressure but obviously if you're giving someone a peak pressure of 40 centimeters of water there's a risk that the plateau pressure is greater than 30 centimeters of water and and right now in 2021 we're trying to avoid that uh so you know that's where the the equation of motion is helpful uh or if the flow gets to zero inside the eye time you know those are those are tools that we've talked about as how to evaluate the plateau pressure uh, previously.
Perfect. Matt, if I can just, uh, I've just been taking notes here. If I can summarize what Chad and Shell said. So um, PRVC or SEMV plus, this is the first point I think of this video, is a pressure controlled mode. We can consider using that if we're asked to ventilate a patient in a pressure controlled mode. PCV plus specifically uh, can be used in patients who uh, have a high resistance uh, in particular, that'll be patients that are placed in when they're in the obstructor protocol because the rate is so low at 10, takes a long time to get up to higher pressures. And the second scenario to you consider using PCV plus is the patient that we're doing CPR on mm-hmm. uh, for the reasons Chad mentioned. And then, and then the third learning point, I think, is just the last one. P control gets added to the PEEP and that will give you your peak pressure. Um, so that, that's what I heard you guys say. And I, is that, uh, is that a fair summary? That's a perfect summary. Thanks very much. Okay. Hey, thanks, well, Matt. thanks uh, team for taking the time to do the video and, uh, we'll talk to you all again soon. Thanks, Matt.